Hey, this is Joseph Lebrecq, and I'm going to be going over some of the new tools and properties available to us in Adobe Edge Preview 5. So the first one that I'd like to point out is the Transform tool up in the toolbar. And this tool takes on some of the older properties of the Selection tool, which actually aren't available in the Selection tool anymore. So if I use the Rectangle tool here to create a new rectangle. You'll notice with the selection tool I don't any longer have control over the corner radius on any of these corners. However, that functionality has been moved to the transform tool. So using the transform tool I can adjust the corner radius and I can also move the transform point. I can now skew with this tool and I can perform rotation on the object. So we used to have to do all of this from the transform grouping within the properties panel here. And we don't have to do that anymore. We can use this tool. Another tool is the clipping tool. So using the clipping tool, we can now clip our object. And it's kind of a nice little uh, visual mechanism here that we can see the hidden parts of the object itself when it's actually clipped. So this tool just makes, again, that sort of thing so much easier. And I'll just undo out of that. Um, as far as the rest of the tools, these rectangle and rounded rectangle tools both behave as they have always done. So the text tool, and then you've got your background color and border color swatches. So what are some other things that are new? We've also got the ability to change the cursor on an object. So you'll select the object and go to this cursor property. And by default, it's set to auto. But we can click on that, and we get a nice assortment of different cursors that we can change uh, depending upon what's actually going on. So maybe I'll do this uh, move cursor. So then we see that the move cursor is going to show up whenever we actually uh, play this thing. So let's do that. Let's go control enter. And here's my edge composition. You can see as I move over, I actually do get that cursor adjustment. So another thing in regard to animation is a more robust easing mechanism. So if I select a particular transition here, I've got this new tool. It's an easing tool and it allows us to visually see how our easing is actually going to work. And we've got linear ease in with all of these subcategories, ease out with the same, and ease in and out with those same sets of categories. And then we also have swing, which is just swing. So that's pretty cool we can now see visually exactly what's going on when we apply an ease to a transition. You'll probably notice too that things in the timeline look a little bit more refined now. For instance, we actually get measurements percentages for things like scale, and we get time code for playback actions. The playback actions themselves look a little nicer here. Um, to add more, you just add them from right here. and also, the time code display now appears near the playhead. One other thing notable about the playhead is that the mark is now known as the pin. So if we want to use the mark, we no longer have to alt-click on here. We just double-click. And then the pin shows up right here. And we can drag the pin. We get this nice visual cue that everything's going to be pinned at this point here. And then we still get our actual playhead notification here. If we move the pin backwards, we can see that everything will be pinned right at that point. And here's our playhead here. And the color actually shifts. And the arrows change direction. So that indicates which direction the actual change in animation is going to, to come from. To close the pin, you just simply double click on there again, and there you go. There's also a little toggle here, and you can also hit P 
to toggle the pin on and off. So some nice little enhancements and improvements there. One last thing I want to mention is the ability to have symbol events. So if I double click to go into my symbol, you can see that I have my symbol properties here and I've got events I can add to this symbol. The two events right now are creation complete, which will fire initially when the symbol is created, and then before deletion, which anything in there will fire actually right before the symbol is deleted. So if you need to base any sort of actions on the creation or deletion of a symbol, now we can do that really easily. We don't have to go mucking with the code anymore.